Hello everyone, welcome back to Paradise on Pennies. I'm Heather and today it's time for another book review for those of you who are nomads that love to read. Uh, people who will be van dwelling and taking along a stack of books like we do. Um, we keep a lot of books in our truck camper, this is only some of them. Um, we love reading and living this lifestyle is a really great way to get in time to read. And today I am going to feature a book that I find to be oh, probably one of the most recommended useful books that you could take with you on the road. And off the shelf it is a foraging book. Yes, and this is one of my favorites. This is Pacific Northwest Foraging. It's by Douglas Durr. And this has been a real go-to guide for me. If you guys have been following along, you know I've been putting up a lot of videos about my adventures in foraging, and a lot of ideas came from originally reading this book. Um, I have looked into other resources as well, but this is a really thorough guide that I would highly recommend if you are just getting into foraging, or if you just want to expand your foraging ideas uh, it is specific to the Pacific Northwest, and I find the Pacific Northwest to be a place of bounty for foraging, so a great place to start in foraging. That doesn't mean you can't find some of these things outside of the Pacific Northwest, however. It's just these are the primary species that you would look at, you know, if you're in the Pacific Northwest region, but it's still pretty useful no matter where you are. Um, but if you are planning on traveling to the Pacific Northwest or... or living on the road and traveling through the Pacific Northwest, or if you are from the Pacific Northwest, you might find this book really darn handy to have. And there are a lot of books out there that, you know, teach plant identification. They don't all have the foraging focus, so you probably want to be careful there. Um, plant ID is great. I mean, if you could just keep building up your identification skills, that's helpful even on the foraging aspect. However, it doesn't exactly tell you the details of the where and what and cautions and things like that because it's coming more from an idea that you are identifying not necessarily putting this thing in your mouth. <laughs> so it's good to have a book that does know that you might plan to put these things in your mouth and it can give you some information about whether or not you should and why you might want to and how is the best way to do that. Uh, yeah, so this book will definitely have a good, will definitely be a good source for identification. There are pictures that you can use to help you identify things. Uh, the author actually states at the beginning, and I agree completely, that you might not want to just use one picture to identify something, that this is a place to start. And if you get interested in something, you probably want to go online as well and just kind of look up some more pictures and familiarize yourself even more especially before you consume something. Um, it's always very important to be cautious with consumption of random things. Sure, it's great to experiment, but as many um, ancient people probably know, experimentation was sometimes deadly. So let's not be those people. Um, when I started off with foraging, I made my plan, and I'm still in this area of foraging despite having learned a lot of new things, where I pretty much just stick to the things I feel the most confident about. If, if it's easy to identify, if it's easy to distinguish from other things, um, then I'm fine with it. But if, I'm, if I don't feel personally confident on the identification or if there's lookalikes out there, I tend not to really try it right off the bat. I, I keep a collection of material and information so that I can learn a little more about it until I am at that confident level. So I might highly suggest you do that too. And again, this book is a great start because aside from just pictures and identification, it goes through how to identify. So there's actually a written thing that you can read um, that will give you some more information to help you. Like, are the leaves fuzzy? Are there thorns? Uh, what are the flowers like? When does it bloom? What time of year should you expect to find it? That's really useful information. Uh, where and when to gather, how to gather, how to eat. This book is interesting because it is written, I believe he was a, yeah, he's a chef. Um, and so the, or at least the reviewers were chefs. Um, so I think that the perspective comes from the idea of how to prepare this stuff, which not every book's going to give you that. 
So it is kind of cool for me to be able to read and be like, well, how, you know, everything's better eaten a certain way. Think potato. You don't normally take a potato, take a bite of it. You could, I guess. But if people did that, they might be like, ugh. You cook it, you cook it on the fire, maybe you add a little butter or something on it, or cheese, or whatever you add to your potato to make it delicious, salt and pepper, and suddenly it's such a delicious side dish or even main course, right? So, yeah, so think potato. <laughs> so there's different ways to prepare things, and there's different parts of the plant we eat, whereas we don't eat other parts. So it really helps train your brain in thinking about how we pick food off the ground to eat and to me it feels like such an awesome thing to connect with the land to actually be eating off of the land and that's one reason why I love having a book like this and why I got into foraging Uh, because yeah I mean when you're out there as much as you can do to just feel like you're more a part of the land and feel like you're a basic human um, and just kind of be a little vulnerable you are eating things off the ground. It does make you vulnerable. You are competing with things like bears for their berries. <laughs> and if you go by the water and you filter it, because we have to filter it today. That's not all natural, but <laughs> we filter our water. And then you go up and you have some berries and you have some greens and whatever else you've picked. Uh, and then you make a meal from, even if it's not all the ingredients, but if it's some ingredients from here, it just feels so good. I've done it many times and really cool to experience. I think everyone should experience some ele- some element of foraging. Things you won't find in this book, uh, mushrooms. So if you're wanting to get into mushroom hunting or mushroom foraging, you will have to go for a different book. And there are a lot out there on that too. I myself have not yet gotten heavily into mushroom foraging. Again, it's one of those areas I just don't feel confident in yet. Um, I definitely would love to learn it, so it's not out of the question. I'll learn anything, especially things that are good for self-sustainability. And mushrooms have a good, lot of good nutritional aspects, too. I believe there's a decent amount of calcium in mushrooms, another one of those uh, sources that people don't usually think of. So, yeah, when I was younger, I didn't think I liked mushrooms because I thought it was kind of a slimy, weird texture. But now I've, I've come around, and I know, again, if you prepare it right, it can be good. Uh, So I may get into that in the near future as well. But for now, this one's mostly berries and greens and flowers and things like that. So just keep that in mind um, that you won't find anything about mushrooms in here. Um, Things you will find, though, like some of my favorites was uh, wild mint. I have a general idea of what it was like, but I used this to help me really identify it. And I did find wild mint, and that was awesome. And I've been drying it for tea since then. So that's really exciting for me. Um, other things. Ginger. Chamomile. Um, you might be drinking chamomile tea. And you might buy it from the store. Well, guess what? With a book like this, you can learn to identify this plant that's really ubiquitous. And then you can make your own tea. So it's a good way to save money, is actually getting a book like this. Because eventually, once you know all your stuff... You don't necessarily have to go to the store and buy it. You can forage it all by yourself. (laughs) There's something in here called Devil's Club. Would you think that that is edible? Looks really spiny, right? Actually has edible parts. Um, So, yeah, that's the kind of thing. You might look at that and never think that it was edible. Um, believe it or not, with all those spines, it is edible. So that was something that was cool to find. And it does talk about some of the Native American uses and uh, studies that uh, deal with what special features this plant boasts. So you can read about that in the book, too. Uh, Other than that, there's definitely an abundance of green food nutrition in here, which I love green food nutrition because we need a lot of greens in our diet. But living this lifestyle, it makes it really hard to keep greens. I've talked about that before. They go bad pretty quickly. So within a couple days, we're kind of out of greens. So this type of information in this book has really helped us in the aspect of how to have greens at camp for a long time. There's something great about just picking what you need off the plant rather than our current society's strategy of picking more than we need, throwing it in the store, and then throwing half of it away. So another great reason to get into foraging uh, from a values perspective. Hmm, blackberries. All right, guys. Well, I am going to continue to learn my foraging 
and plant identification skills so that I may continue to be self-sustained and eat off the ground. And there's never been a better time to have that skill, right? So yeah, Pacific Northwest Foraging. Again, as always, I will put the link to this book. This book is available on Amazon. And I will go ahead and put the link below. So if you'd like to get your hands on this book and get out there and, and, and get to foraging some greens and some berries, you can join me on the side of the mountain or wherever it takes us to try to get some free nutritious food. So you can find that link below. And as always, I will work as hard as I can to get another book review coming up soon so you guys can continue to build your road life library. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for being here. If you liked this video and it was helpful, go ahead and just give me a like. It helps, uh, it helps people know that these videos are useful. And uh, yeah, that would be great. And go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you want updates on my next book review. I plan to be banging out a lot of book reviews in the near future. So you might want to get an update on that if you're an avid reader like myself. Check that out and I will see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.